It's a beautiful Friday evening in mid-Missouri and particularly good for those attending football games tonight. North Callaway is no exception. The weather coming up. Today marks the anniversary of a day Americans will never forget. The Missouri Tigers often leave their opponents with a long ride home. Now Tiger fans could have a ride of their own to the zoo. And it would be a very short ride home if South Callaway can capture the Callaway Cup. It's week three of Friday Night Fever. KOMU 8 News at 6 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 6. Just an hour away before high schools kick off week three of Friday Night Fever. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Hill. And I'm Susie Steinwell. Thanks for joining us. Your FNF three game of week three is battle for the Callaway Cup. Let's go right to Jim, Dave, and Chris. They are live at North Callaway High School. You got some hardware, Jim. Did you hear them? They said Callaway Cup. This, this is, is the coveted mm -hmm. Callaway Cup on the line tonight between <laughs> North and South. Two unbeaten teams coming in at 2-0. and oh. It's kind of one-sided here, though. They have the the winners. <laughs> One-sided as in all North all the time, but yeah. South Callaway made the playoffs last year and it started well this season, so the Bulldogs are thinking of taking that trophy from the T-Birds here no, tonight. Here, you take it away from me for right okay. now, and I'll right. pitch it over here to Dave for the weather. No stadium blankets required tonight. I think it's going to be really nice out there. We've got a really nice uh, northeasterly breeze. Kickoff temperature about 77, 78 degrees. Driving home tonight uh, about 66 with a partly cloudy sky. <laughs> no one's paying any attention to you because he's posing over well, here. Well, I don't with get to pose with trophies very often, so I'm going to make the most of this. We're out of time for now. Let's send it back to the studio. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Traffic at Stadium in Providence and Columbia can be a huge jam before an MU football game. That's right. And a city program aims to help Tiger fans commute. KMU 8's Robert Kessler tells us about the Spirit Bus. Today, this Robert Kessler, KOMU 8 News, Columbia. For a complete list of the Spirit Bus's stops, go to our website, KOMU.com. And it may sound simple, yeah. but hand washing is a simple habit that can help you avoid illnesses, including swine flu. KOMUH Sung Lee Han shows us how some businesses are staying germ free for their customers. Doors, tables, Sung Lee Han, KOMU 8 News, Columbia. Experts say waterless hand sanitizer provides several advantages over hand washing with soap and water. However, sanitizers are ineffective if organic matter like dirt or food is visible on the hands. It was a scene of emergency vehicles, music, and hometown heroes at the Capitol this afternoon, all to honor fallen comrades and those who continue fighting today. KOMU8's Allison Archer has more on this 9-11 memorial service. Kurt Dooley's first trip to New York wasn't like most. As Allison Archer, KOMU8 News, Jefferson City. And funds raised at this memorial service will go to military families. An Associated Press photographer embedded with a group of Marines captured a controversial photo. Sarah Hill will now show you tonight's Your View. Hello and welcome to Your View. So what do you think? Should the Associated Press have released that photo? Log on to our website at KOMU.com and click on the Your View tab. You can also call us on the Your View comment line at 573-884-NEWS. Then watch Friday nights at 6 as we report your view of the news. September 11th affected many Americans. Right here in the Show Me State, see what mid-Missourians did to remember this day. A nice breeze here in Kingdom City, Missouri, and a really good-looking weekend forecast. Michelle Bogerwith has that next for you here on KOMU 8 News at 6. Now, your live down parade first alert weather with meteorologist Michelle Bogerwith. Welcome back. It's 11 minutes past the 6 o'clock hour. You are taking a live look out over the city of Columbia there where you can see Memorial Union for our first alert weather cam. We do have some hazy sunshine still going on out there. There's oh, yes. Now let's check in with Jim Reek. He is live at North Calloway County High School with a story off the field. Jim? Yeah, that is right. On this 8th anniversary of 9-11, there is a direct tie-in between Kingdom City and New York City. That's coming up next on KOMU 8 News at 6. 
Welcome back to KOMU 8 News at 6 o'clock. It is week three of Friday Night Fever. We're live here at North Callaway High School. Kingdom City is just a mile down the road. I am joined by KOMU 8's Erica Zuko. There is the Missouri Firefighters Memorial at Kingdom City, and you're here to tell us about the tie-in between that memorial and the events of 9-11, 2001. Well, the memorial in Kingdom City was built in 2001, and it was Missouri firefighters and community organizations that raised all of the money that was needed to make this happen. I talked to a couple of Missouri firefighters who know all about the connection between Min, Missouri and New York City and what brings them together. Well, they give us, give us all these names. Inscribed in granite. The and that's what this is for. It's for the public, but it's for the firefighters to remember their brothers and sisters. Firefighters Memorial Foundation is now raising money to build a museum next to the memorial. It's going to have histories of all the firefighters that have passed while serving in the line of duty. Erica, there's a little bit of a footnote, and I'll mention that two of my former colleagues, uh, Beth Malicki and Gary Grigsby, were in New York City uh, two weeks after 9-11, and they had been tipped off about this statue, and, and they were told what corner it was. Sure enough, they walked over, they got video of that statue on the flatbed truck, so it's quite a story. Thank you very much, Erica. As I said, it's week three of Friday Night Fever. We've got two 2-0 two and o teams tonight, Chris. Well, you know, this is how we draw it up, so to speak. We, we look ahead to the games throughout the season, hope for good matchups. This is, of course, a great rivalry, the battle for the Callaway Cup. Both teams unbeaten. Can't ask for much more than this. We've even got great weather. So we'll have sports live from North Callaway High School coming up next. Now, KOMU 8 Sports with Chris Cermino. Well, hello again, everyone, from North Callaway High School. We will take a break, come back with more from North Callaway High School before the Bulldogs kick off against the Thunderbirds here at North Callaway. Another look at a good-looking weekend from North Callaway High School. We're talking about Saturday, lots of sun, few clouds, high temperature 83 tomorrow, 80 on Sunday. It is week three of Friday Night Fever. We're live here at North Callaway High School. We've got the Callaway Cup behind us. We've got the North Callaway cheerleaders. Should be a good ball game, Chris. Ought to be a great game. Great weather. Two teams that have yet to lose this season. So somebody's going to suffer the first setback tonight while the <laughs> other team will improve to 3-0 and and really be well on its way to an outstanding season. The sports crew is busy tonight. Oh, we are busy. 17 games to show you highlights from tonight at 10. So do tune in. Lots of games and all the scores, of course. All we'll right. Be there. Let's turn it over to the North Callaway cheerleaders. Good luck, girls. Hey, hey. Dash B. 